Dear Mayor Ed Murray, Seattle City Council, and Seattle Department of Transportation, let's talk about the Ballard Bridge. Built in 1917 with a length of 2,854 feet, the Ballard Bridge connects the Ballard neighborhood where I live and work with the Inner Bay, Magnolia, and Queen Anne neighborhoods, and also provides a direct route to downtown Seattle. It is the Seattle Bridge operated by Seattle Department of Transportation, known commonly as SDOT. It's a great route when you're driving a car across one of its four lanes. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour, but drivers commonly go 40, making it a quick, easy route. But that's if you're in a car. On the sidewalk? Well, that's another story. It's fairly inaccessible and dangerous. Let's take a look. This is the sidewalk of the Ballard Bridge. It gets as narrow as 39 inches, or 3 feet 3 inches. The only protections from the fast-moving trucks and cars is a cement barrier that is 10 and a half inches in height. Some pedestrians and cyclists brave the Ballard Bridge, but many people I've talked to say they don't feel safe enough just crossing it or the chance they'll have to cross paths with another person. Let's take a look at those interactions. We couldn't find a wheelchair to use, but ADA regulations requires a minimum of 32 inches clearance. So if a person were on the sidewalk in a wheelchair, that would give a passing walker or cyclist only 7 inches to get around the wheelchair. If you're on a bike and make it across the bridge heading south on the west side, your next challenge is merging with traffic onto the roadway. The cars are supposed to yield to you so you can enter traffic to continue south, but it's rare they do, so you will wait until there is a big enough break in traffic or a nice driver actually yields to you. From there, well, that's a whole story for another day. This is the Ballard Bridge. So let's say you want to get across this area, but you're too scared to bike or walk the bridge. Understandable. There are a couple of alternatives. You can go all the way over here and detour via the Fremont Bridge. That detour is 3.9 miles, and according to Google Maps, it will take you one hour and six minutes to walk it, or 22 minutes to bike it. Alright, 
let's try the other direction. Go all the way this way, cross at the locks, and come all the way back. That detour via the locks is 3.3 miles. It will take you one hour to walk and 25 minutes to bike it. And it's only open to cross from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. There are not a lot of good alternatives to get across the Ballard Bridge. Mayor Ed Murray, Seattle City Council, and SDOT, you know better. SDOT on its own website states that sidewalks need to be at least five feet wide. The bridge is almost 100 years old. Isn't it about time you made some improvements that benefit non-motorized transportation? What happens when all those new residents in your urban design plan move to Ballard? Are you expecting them to only drive across the bridge? SDOT finally published a study on widening this terrible sidewalk. There are solutions. Beyond just being scary to ride, I had a very bad experience riding my bike across the bridge. I was blown into the sidewall, I think from the wind of a passing truck. My bike bag hit a concrete post and it jarred me, and I fell over the small 10 and a half inch concrete barrier into the traffic lane. Luckily, no cars were coming, and I was able to get myself out of the lane before being hit. I'm still very nervous every time I bike across the bridge, remembering the fall. Does this sound familiar to you? I'm not the only one this has happened to. In July 2007, a cyclist named Terry McMacken had the same accident, but he wasn't so lucky. He was struck by a car, lost his left arm, and died a year later from the injuries sustained from that crash. You know this bridge isn't safe. It's already taken a life. Isn't it about time to fix it? Mayor Ed Murray, Seattle City Council, and SDOT make the Ballard Bridge sidewalk wider and protected from traffic. Make it safe for everyone and get on it.